today we welcome y'all to Pineville Christian Church this morning. If you would, let's uh, stand, let's make a joyful noise to the Lord and invite his presence among us. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day today, and welcome to Pineville Christian Church. I'm uh, Todd Taylor. I'm an associate pastor here. Jason is on one of his many vacations <laughs> that he takes once like every five years. So I hope he's off having a good time. I know they went to Branson, Missouri. I've seen some good pictures and stuff. So I'm going to be filling in for him today. And we want to thank you to Pine, uh, for coming to Pineville Christian Church today. If you're a first-time visitor, there's a card in the seat in front of you. Go ahead and fill that out for us and put that in the offering plate when we do the offering here in just a little bit. So we're going to have, it's going to be a little different day, a little different order than we're used to. Uh, because as you can see, we're going to have a special day. We're going to have a baptism here in a little while. So uh, I have to move some things around. So we're going to start today by doing our communion meditation and passing out communion, which is something we believe in here at Pineville Christian Church. So, uh, this week as I was preparing the message, 
I was thinking about Jesus, and, and today's message is going to be a lot on the Holy Spirit, which is the third incarnation of God in our, in our understanding. And the thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit couldn't come unless Jesus left us. And remember that Jesus was, was a man. He was limited by what a man could do when he was here, when God sent him as a man. He could have used the powers of God, but he used them rarely just to prove who he was. So he couldn't be everywhere all at once, but the Spirit could be. So as we partake in communion today, I want us to thank God for the sacrifice he gave us. And not just his blood and his body, which is the most important part, but that he knew he had to leave so we could get the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead us through, that could be with every one of, one of us as we go forward and in every one of us. So let us pray as the boys come forward to help pass out communion. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your sacrifice, Lord. We know that without it, there would be no Savior. There would be no heaven. There would be no salvation for any of us. So, Lord, as we partake in these elements today, let us thank you from the bottom of our heart and reflect on what great a gift it was that you gave us, the gift of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I get to reflect on this more often than y'all do because a part of my job is to work for the church and I'm out in the community and I get to see how our funds directly impact people. Just this week, I had to, um, I delivered some groceries to some people that were going hungry and I could tell they were going hungry because they packed those groceries when I got it to them. And there's many different ways that we can impact and spread the love of Jesus Christ. And this is just one of the ways. So I want to thank you all for the gifts that you give. 
And even if you don't have the opportunity to give, use your gifts in some way to show somebody the love of Christ. We've all had hard times. I know I fell into hard times where it would be hard to come up with any money. But what isn't hard is to come up with time to give to somebody. So let people know you love them. Let them know, most importantly, that God loves them. And let's go to him in prayer as we ask him to bless the gifts we use here today. Heavenly Father, I wanted to thank you and ask you to bless the gifts and the giver that you give today, Lord, and bless those who are out there spreading the love of Jesus Christ. This world is broken. It needs so much love in it that it doesn't have today. But through you, we're able to show others how much you love them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for these blessings. Amen. Stand with us as we uh, continue to worship.
Well, as I told you, today's a special day because we're going to have not one, but two baptisms today that I'm very excited about as I move all this stuff out of my way. I'm not like Jason. I need a wide berth. I got to get, get around different places and move as I preach. So y'all come on out now. So I'm very excited that David and Brooklyn here have decided to get rebaptized and reaffirm their trust and put all their faith in Jesus Christ. David, why don't you come with me here real quick? And I told you, just be careful. I'm always for afraid that they're going to fall, but more afraid to pull me in with them if they do. <laughs> so I'm excited. We've known each other about nine months now or so. And uh, I'm also excited that Miss Destiny from the fostering community and My Community Cares is here today because she's the one that introduced us. But I went there and I was speaking with them, as I often do, and told them that I'd like, you know, to be involved in some young people's lives. And the first person that she introduced me to was Brooklyn. And through Brooklyn, I got to meet her boyfriend, David. And let me tell you about David here for a minute. I tell him this, and I mean it. If I had 10 young men like him, I could change this whole community. Uh, and I don't think you mind me sharing or anything, that David's going to be a, a father to Brooklyn's son. He's not the actual father, but that's who he knows as dad, and it doesn't need to be blood to be dad. I can tell you watching him with Miantre is just a total joy to see. And, and he, he expects, uh, not only accepts all the responsibilities of being a father, he really wants to be the father to, to her son and we're just so, so thankful that he's here and that we've got to have them in our lives. So, David, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? No. <laughs> Nervous. All right, man, a few words, okay? So, David, upon your profession of faith in Christ, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in Christ, raised to walk in you. life. <laughs> <laughs> I see Brooklyn, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> All right, Brooklyn, now. <laughs> Here, hold my hand so you don't slip. Now, like I said, I met Brooklyn first. And in the, um, well, I mean, even though it's been nine months, that's really a short time. But in that time, they become like family to me. I used to say they were both like my kids, but they're getting married, so that's perverse. So... <laughs> So Brooklyn's like my daughter and is like a daughter to me, and, and David is, is like a son-in-law. And I'm so proud of her and the way she's come along and uh, the things that she does for her son. I've been there every step of the way for that. Well, not every step, but I've been there for the last nine months for that. And just to see that, and not only that, and some of you are here today because when I spoke to Brooklyn about God, when she got back in touch with God, and she was filled with the Spirit, and she goes forth and she tells people. And she tells them, you need to get your butt in church. <laughs> so I'm so proud of the person that she has become, the person she is, and can't wait to see what the future has for you both together. Brooklyn, do you want to say anything? That's excellent. If you didn't hear, she said she's ready to walk with Christ. So upon your profession of faith in Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Other hand. <laughs> Buried in Christ. Ooh, let's be raised to walk anew. <laughs> Proud of you. All baptisms are special to us, but that, that, was pretty, that was extremely special to me because of how much I love those two. And I think it's also helpful for me today about what I'm going to speak about. Because we just finished up with Easter and we talked about Christ and, of course, his sacrifice that he made for us. And I want to talk about, kind of stay in there, jump a little bit ahead, but I want to talk about what Christ promised us. Because when he left, he promised us a helper. 
and I wanted to talk about the helper that comes in the form of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm sorry. Kids, I know you want to stay in here and listen to this, but we do have children's church, so if you'd like to go down, we got our helpers back there. They're going to take you down and look, teach you all kinds of lessons. So, the Holy Spirit. I want us to look at what a lot of people talk about, and that's Pentecost. And as we get into our reading today, if I can get my helper to pay attention, we're, we're going to go, I invite you today, if you have your Bibles, to join me. We're going to be in, the, in Acts chapter 2, and we're going to start in the very first verse. And it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one had heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Siren, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders of the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Before I go on, I want to say this is the fulfillment of what Jesus told us about. In the 14th chapter, John, he tells us, I'm sorry, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So here we see the fulfillment of what Jesus talked about. He promised a person that would come and be our helper, our comforter. Our, some of the words they used was our provider. So many different adjectives in the different things. Real quick, I often thought to myself, why don't we glorify the spirit enough? You know, I wondered that, because we speak a lot about God, we speak a lot about Jesus, but we don't speak about the Holy Spirit. So I went to the one place that I usually go for answers. Now, I wish I could tell you I went to the Bible, but that's not usually where I go. I got a very smart person in my life, his name is Google. So I Googled it, why Christians didn't, but surprisingly, or not surprisingly, I found my answer in the Bible. In John 16, 13, it says, he will not speak of himself. See, the Holy Spirit will not speak of himself. He will, he's only come here for one thing, and that's to glorify Jesus Christ. He's not here to talk about the Holy Spirit. Be careful if you go around and somebody's talking the Holy Spirit this and the Holy Spirit that, because the Holy Spirit himself says that's not his purpose. His purpose is for us to talk about Jesus this, Jesus that, and so on. So I just found that interesting, and now I kind of understand a little bit maybe why we don't completely talk about the Holy Spirit, but that doesn't mean... It's not important. He's as important because he's one of the three Godheads, right? I say he because it's not an it. It is a person. So I've highlighted three points that we can think about when you get the Holy Spirit in your life. 
and I was thinking about this as I went through the reading we did. The first point is, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you need to inv let the Holy Spirit in you to give you life. It's hard to understand sometimes, but and sometimes we don't like to hear it, but I'm going to tell you all that we all have a point in time where we are dead in life. We're walking dead people. In fact, I thought about that when I was thinking about that because we're dead because of our sins and trespasses. We are sinful people. We do not let the Spirit of God run our lives. And I don't know if anybody's here fans of The Walking Dead, but I thought that was kind of an appropriate analogy as I was doing it. You know, The Walking Dead's about how it's a story about survivors, but most of the world has turned into zombies, walking dead people. And sadly, I thought, boy, that's a lot of the way that the world is now if we really think about it. There's people out here walking around in their sin every day, just zombies, dead inside. But it doesn't have to be that way. What they need is what we all need. We need life. And even though we sin, the Holy Spirit comes to give us that new life. Give us that new life in Jesus Christ. You see, a man without God is dead. I know of very good men in this life who have not accepted Jesus Christ. How many people have heard, well, I'm just going to be a good person. That's what God wants. I hear it over and over again. It's a, it's a very bad lie. That's not what God wants. God wants to live inside you. He wants you to accept his son as a savior. And Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again in order to be a man with Jesus Christ. Two young people today who realized that they needed to be rebaptized, recommit themselves, gave their lives over to Christ to be born again. It's a supernatural act of the Holy Spirit coming on you. And remember, it's something that's a free gift from God. It is not something through our works. We don't attain the Holy Spirit because, oh, this person has done this much good. Here comes the Holy Spirit. Or this person does that much good. Even in our own lives, we can think of Christians that have done greater things than us. I think of Mother Teresa. I think of Billy Graham. I think of many people. But it's not about, and, and they would be the first ones to tell you, it is not about what they did. It is the free gift from God. You know, in Titus, he tells us these very things. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings the message of Jesus Christ in us. We're saved by his mercy, his mercy alone. And not only are we saved by his mercy, we're saved by it daily. We need to renew daily with the Holy Spirit. Some people are walking around that accepted the Holy Spirit sometimes, and maybe they were baptized before, but yet the Spirit's dormant in them. I was trying to figure a better way to say that because the Spirit's not really dormant in them. We're dormant. We're not allowing the Spirit to speak to us. We're not allowing the Spirit to move us. We're not allowing the Spirit to change us. <laughs> but he's there, but we need it every day. I want to be the first person up here to tell you I don't deserve to have my sins forgiven. I don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve to have this peace in my heart that I have. I don't deserve to have joy. But I get them from the free gift that is Jesus Christ. Nothing I've done. And then when we take in the Holy Spirit, we learn how to really be a good follower of Christ, a good Christian. We understand through him the Bible. I find it often interesting how two different people reading the same passage, but they get something different out of it. That's the Spirit working in you to tell you what you need to hear out of that, what you need to learn. Where I'm at in my walk may be different than what you're at in your walk. So it may be different what the Spirit tells us. We learn about the structure of the church. We understand what it's like to live as a Christian and understand our own relationship to God. That all comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says that he's 
everywhere, no matter where you go. Here it says in Psalms 139, 7, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? So you may ask, well, if the spirit's everywhere, what do I have to invite him in for? And it's true, the spirit's everywhere. For the minute you're born, the spirit's around you, but there's a difference. The one place that God will not place the spirit is in your heart. He wants you to accept that gift. He wants you to have the spirit in you. He's not going to just force you to accept the Holy Spirit. And that's a great thing about Christianity. Sometimes, and that's also what makes us different from many of the other religions. We're not forced to love God. It's a choice. But what a wonderful choice it is. And when we make it, then we get to take in the Holy Spirit. And I want you to think about what that means that the Holy Spirit is in you. That means God, the creator of everything you see, this whole world. One thing I love is scientists are starting to come towards, they, they can't explain the Big Bang Theory. They can't explain this. What they can explain is there has to be some creator involved. We know that as Christians. Sometimes I'm like, well, you had a book right there. Just read it. Your answers are already right there. But the creator of this world, of everything, is inside of you. And then when, we, when he's inside of us, we need to treat our bodies more like a temple. And I mean that in several different ways. Some of you have asked and noticed I've lost weight. And yes, I need to get healthy. Some of my health issues over the last year has kind of like finally pushed me where I need to go. But, and, and honestly, I, jo I joined a, a group. I joined Octavia this week or two weeks ago, which is nice. So I had to write down why I wanted to lose it. And the reason I want to lose it is because I want to serve God longer. That's my motivation. And that's what we need to do. We need to have that. But it's not just that type of health. You need to watch what you put inside you, unclean things. You got to watch what you watch. You got to watch who you hang out with. You got to watch, of course, obviously, you got to watch literal things you put inside of you. We are our temple, and we must remember we're a temple. He told us in 1 Corinthians 3.16, Know ye not that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So do we realize that? Do we understand that we're a temple of God? I think once you realize that, once you invite him, and I'm going to tell you, if you have not invited him, we're going to have a little opportunity later for you to invite him. Jason and I had a, dis a discussion because I had a discussion with the pastor who said, the Holy Spirit comes in you when you get baptized. And I, that wasn't my understanding, and I don't feel it's still my understanding because I believe when you invite God to come into you, that is when the Spirit comes upon you. It's okay to disagree on some if, I, if anyone disagrees with me, but that's the understanding of my part, and a great part of Jason helping me go through the scriptures. So invite the Spirit and understand the choice is yours. If you don't invite the Spirit, you can come week after week. You can come your whole life to church. If you don't invite the Spirit in you, you're not going to get to be where you're going to go, where you want to go. And then when the Spirit comes in you, it's easy to, for us to see what it does with the next point, which is, I'm skipping some, Brendan, so keep on going. Keep going. For, oh, number, number two, he's went way too far ahead. I got to get, uh, um, boy, I, I, I fear for who his boss is. He's going to talk to him a little bit. <laughs> Point number two, Brendan, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to convict you. We spoke about this in Bible study uh, a few weeks ago. And I want to encourage you, if you got an opportunity on Wednesdays to come to one of our Bible studies, this is somewhat a commercial, but it is very true. We have them at 1030 in the morning and we have at 6.30 that night, please come. You can learn a lot more about what the lessons are that we're talking about. We get into much more in depth. But the Holy Spirit convicts you. We don't really like that word convict today. Because when we hear the word convict, it pretty much means, you know, they've been convicted of a crime, right? And to a certain point, that's the way it is. Because the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. There we see. And when he has come, he will of its sin and the God's 
righteousness, and of the coming judgment. It's the Spirit's job to convict us that we are sinful people. I can't speak for you. Every day I'm getting, I get convicted that I'm a sinful person. Got to go home and seek repentance because I did this or that. I always find it funny. Josh always laughs at me because he knows I'm driving. So if I'm driving, I probably got to go home and ask for repentance because I get upset at the way certain people drive. But we need to turn our lives over to Christ because we're sinful people. And it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us to do that. There is another point here that I want to make very clear that Jason made very clear to us, and I agree when we were in a Bible study. It is the Spirit's job to convict, which means it's not whose job. It's not our job. Let the Spirit convict. Speak to people when they need conviction through the Spirit. But you have to do it in love and let the Spirit do the, do the work. I get frustrated sometimes. Frustrated may not be the, the right word because I, I, I go to God in prayer. But I know some of the people I deal with deal with things that they shouldn't do. And I'm trying to convict them. But I got to remember that's the Spirit's job. I got to speak to them about Jesus Christ. Let them know that there's a better way. I can't speak for you about this either, but for me, whenever I focus on other people and what they're doing, boy, do I get off my track. He's taught me that lesson several times. Suddenly I'll be like, boy, I got to get back on with me. I'm not in touch with the Spirit. God's not moving me in the right way. I'm worried too much about what someone else is doing. Meanwhile, I'm being a horrible person. Don't, let, don't fall into that trap. Let the Spirit do the work. And sometimes, I'll tell you now, if you haven't, or you still the Spirit is going to disturb you. He's going to make you angry. No, no one likes somebody coming in front of them and saying, you need to repent. You are sinful. Well, look, you're going to get that in the face every time from the Spirit. He's going to tell us that we're sinful people. And we have to accept it, because without it, the work of the Holy Spirit, we could never go to heaven. We could never have our sins forgiven. We can never be saved, but we can be because the Spirit convicts us of our sin. We see in Scripture that the Bible teaches us, though, that it's not just the conviction. He convicts us of our sin, but he offers us liberty. He gives us liberty out of the bondage of law, not the Pineville police law, but the overall law they used to teach, and out of the bondage of legalism, because you see, even though you may look at you may be a slave, I'm sorry, you may be a slave to drugs, alcohol, or whatever it may be. Maybe anger, resentment, envy, the list goes on and on. But look what Romans 6, 15 and 18 says. Well, I think. Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you became a sl the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery of sin. You have become slaves to righteous living. We so many people, they talk about, well, first of all, slavery still exists in this world, doesn't it? in many different forms or fashions, sadly. Sometimes we have to deal with girls who are being trafficked. That's a part of slavery. And really, all they want to do is be free. We're all slaves unless we give up our sins and follow God. I think about that when it says slaves, and I think about video games, which I like to play. And I used to play them all day. If it was the weekend... You know, at least an eight-hour shift to play in Call of Duty. I was a slave to that. I'm not a slave to that anymore. I still play, but I play within reason. Because the Holy Spirit convicted me, I needed to move on from some of the things. He is the one that convicts us of the need for Christ. Now listen, though. If you resist him, which you can't, but if you keep resisting him, your heart gets harder and harder all the time. And there may be a point where you come where there's no more repentance in you. Which means there's no more salvation. 
Don't allow yourself to wait. Allow yourself to let the Holy Spirit come in and convict you that you need, it, that you need Jesus Christ so you can be saved. There's no salvation without the Holy Spirit to lead us to Christ. And there's one more point I want to talk about conviction before I move on to the last point. And that's the Holy Spirit convicts us to use the gifts we have for God. Each one of you have gifts that you were given. This, you know, the, the, they talk about, uh, like my son, who right now is taking a criminal justice class in college to be a teacher. He is not going to be a criminal justice teacher. It's one of those well-rounded things. Look, I believe that we have gifts and we're good in this and we might not be good in that or we might be good in something else and not good in that. This well-rounded thing isn't, mm, isn't exactly what I believe. I believe we have certain gifts that God has made us. All of us have them. And we have them through the Holy Spirit. It tells us in Acts 1.8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He gives us these gifts. Free of charge. Are we using them for God? You might be a good administrator. Say, how can I use that for God? Come ask Jason and me. We could use a good administrator. <laughs> we see people up here that are, are good musicians, and they use that. That's one thing I couldn't do, and I'm so thankful for that they use their gifts. We have good teachers. Maybe that's a good way for you to use. And there might be a skill that you don't even understand. I work for an electrical company, too. And I have used those electricians more than once to help show somebody the love of God. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if they realize it, but I let them know that when I send them somewhere that we're helping out somebody that maybe doesn't have the money to do that. And is a friend of mine, and we need to pull in a little favor. Look, whatever you have could be a gift of God. I know a dentist that from time to time I have to call on and say, can you help me out? I have somebody, well, let's be honest, it's me sometimes. <laughs> can you help me out? I, uh, you know, I didn't take care of my teeth like I'm supposed to, and now I've got pain. And sure enough, he shows me the love of Christ and being a brother in Christ and helps that. There's so many ways we can do it. There's so many ways the Holy Spirit wants to convict us and convict us of what we should do in this world. Listen to him. Listen to him on what we should do. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to add this in. So I, I work with Destiny and them at the fostering community, and I go over there, and there's just a bunch of convicted uh, ladies there that know that's what God wants them to do, that shows these kids sometimes horrible situations that it's hard to even speak about. And they go from one to another to another. And I have a hard time with that. <laughs> because I get hurt so much. But their hearts are so much stronger than mine. And they keep going. Talk about using your acts in a way to glorify God. And when God convicts you, the last thing the Holy Spirit does in this, I believe, is he transforms you. You're not going to be the same person that you were. And thank God for that. Sometimes I think about my past, and I don't know who that guy was in my 20s. I have the memories, but I can't remember what the world he was thinking when he did this or that. Thankfully, because God has transformed me. I'm not that person, not just through age and experience, but through God. I wonder why sometimes it took so long. I'm 52, but I'm tired. I'm an old man in some, in some aspects, thanks to some of the diseases, some of the things that I'm dealing with. And I say, God, why didn't you give me this mission sooner? Well, I think he kind of answers me is he had to transform me before he gave me this mission. I couldn't go out and show people the love of Christ the way I do now. Even 10 years ago, 
Sometimes on your soul, it just gets hurting to see people going through tough situations. Sometimes, a lot of times, through no fault of their own. But now I keep going because the Spirit is in me. He allows me to do that. He'll let you use your gifts and transform you to be a person that can be there for him. Think about this with Peter, as we were talking about before, going through here. Peter was not a preacher at the time. He was certainly not an evangelist when the Holy Spirit came. All the disciples who were told to wait by Jesus and did what he said, but they were just cowering in a room all together. But the Spirit transformed them immediately. Suddenly he was out front delivering what is considered to be the very first sermon of the new church, saying things such as, in the last days God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Boy, that's the gospel, especially that last line, right? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what the world needs to hear today. That's what the Holy Spirit came on and delivered that message through Peter. Would any of you one day just suddenly feel comfortable going out and speaking to all these different people? I think you can with the Spirit in you. A lot of people uh, have fears. Uh, the twins aren't here, so Chloe, I had to tell. I know they were, I asked them if they could play piano here at the end. And uh, I guess um, their mom told me that if you want to see fear, you should have seen fear after she asked them that question. <laughs> so I'm going to work with them to just do a little bit of piano playing because I wanted them to display their gifts. But they do have gifts. And they were just nervous, and I didn't give them much time because I did it yesterday. So next time I'll give them some more notice. Actually, they're on notice, Chloe. You let them know they're on notice that uh, when I preach again, I'm going to ask again. And some people need to hear that same message over and over again. I remember a story I heard from Billy Graham about a lady over in England who was taking her driver's test for the 38th time and failed for the 38th time. Perhaps we've tried over and over again with the whole spirit. Maybe we've rededicated our life and come forward and gone out there and said, I'm going to live different, I'm going to do better, and it just hasn't worked. Don't give up. Today may be the day. Invite the spirit back into your life over Christ in the right way by repentance of your sins and by faith of Christ, the spirit will still transform you today. I have some team members that I'm putting together for this ministry team that we're doing locally, and each one of them are working in their own different ways, and the ones that aren't are going to be working here shortly as we get the team going, but they all have particular skills, and I can promise you this team will fail if we don't all ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us. We say, hey, we're going to go do this, but we need to listen. What if the Spirit's telling us we need to do that? We are, going, we are not strong enough to do it on our own. None of us. The strongest person you know cannot do this on the own without the Spirit, without letting him convict us, and without letting him transform us to use our gifts properly. I tell you, do not delay this decision. It is extremely important, and it is very dangerous. We all know people who one day were perfectly healthy and we thought the whole world was in front of them and the next day they were gone. I'm reminded of a, a tough situation in my own life. I used to coach roller hockey in Lima. I think it was our last year. It might have been my second to last year. And I had this young man named Rondale on my team. And he had a rough time. He wasn't doing real well in school, but I worked with him and he was doing better. And he had, we had a very good season, uh, and I wished him well, you know, and would see him next year. And the weekend after, him and his whole family were moving, five kids, or four kids and the mom, 
and they went over railroad tracks as a train hit them. And I'd never been at anything like a funeral like that. And the only open casket was Rondale's. All the other ones were so mangled beyond belief. You couldn't look on them. This young man who was probably at the time in fourth grade, suddenly gone. That could be us. There's no guarantee of tomorrow. There's no guarantee of the next day. In Hebrews, it tells us, 10, 28, and 29, what happens if we don't. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite under the Spirit of grace. That might be a little wordy for, for some people in the King James Version, so I put up the New Living Translation if you want to read it. So basically, it's very simple. Do we want to be in an afterlife with God or without God? But without the Holy Spirit, there is no more. So I'm going to give people an opportunity today. I'm going to ask if you'd come up and play some music for us. I'm going to do an altar call. I like to do altar calls. You know why I like to do altar calls and why I like to call people? Um, you can play. Um, because that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't sit back and say, ah, you know, come on. Come here, the back room. Let's go talk in the back room. He called people up front, honestly, and he prayed for them. He healed them. And that's what I want to do. And if you don't feel like you can, and you do need to speak with me privately, I'll speak with you privately. But if you feel you need a renewal of the Spirit, we're going to offer that today. And you can come up and I'll pray with you. And there'll be no judgment here in this house. If you feel any, point them out to me and I'll go talk to them afterwards. But I don't think we have that here in this church. We want you to feel free to come on up and pray with us. So if you feel the need, I'll be up here. If not, I want you to pray to pray here. The Holy Spirit's moving in everybody that's here. I will tell you we all need it. I speak to my wife. I speak to Jason. I speak to others sometimes when I just am not feeling it. And I need renewal. So they help me out. They renew me. If you need it today, we're going to give you this time to do so.
No takers today, that's okay, because I know where there's takers at, and that's outside these doors. There is a great world out there that needs to understand about the Holy Spirit and the Savior that is Jesus Christ. So take today's message about the Holy Spirit and go forth with there. Let's finish in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift that you've given us. So many gifts, Lord, but today we celebrate and we honor the Holy Spirit that you sent to, to take forth the word of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you allow us to accept the gift, to let it grow inside of us, to let it tell us when we're sinful, to let it tell us what you want us to do and let us to <laughs> use those gifts to go forth and advance your kingdom. Amen. All right, we have some cool events coming up. The first one is this coming Saturday, Family Day at Cane River. I like uh, Brendan's graphics, except for maybe the McDonald's Happy Meal, but that's pretty close to what we're going to have. We have a lot of good food up there. We have a good time. We go fishing, like you can see. Um, right there, we got the 2D. We'll put that up on the uh, Facebook site, and you can scan it, and they'll give you directions out there. But boy, it's a wonderful day. I was thinking about it yesterday. I was out in the park and I said, oh, Lord, please let this be like next Saturday because it was beautiful out there. If you have friends, invite them. But come there. It's such a great time, great fishing, just great fellowship. The other thing we got going on coming up here at the end of the month is we have the Fostering Community 5K. Uh, that's going to be Saturday, April 27th. And I had a little thing here. And what we're going to do there is we're going to do temporary tattoos as well as maybe some other things. But this year, we came up with a cool idea. It's a superhero-themed uh, 5K every year out at um, Fort Randolph State Historic Park. And you can walk a 1K if you want, or you can just come and hang out at the Pineville Christian Church. But it's good. It's not just the race. It's kind of like a family day. they got all kinds of things there. And we had, it was our best turnout last year. And so we do the superhero tattoos. But this year... We're going to still do the superhero tattoos because that's what the kids come for. But we've also bought Christian tattoos. So after we give them a superhero tattoo, we can give them a tattoo about God and take a few minutes to talk about the real superhero in the life here. So in any form or fashion, come out and just have a good time. If you want to help us with the tattoos, things of that nature, it's a great day out there. And it helps. It's the biggest fundraiser, right? So uh, and um, we need funds this year. More than ever, you know, grants and everything kind of drying up a little bit. So do everything you can to support them. Great organization. The whole reason I got into the fostering community is I, after we got back from COVID, I reached out to about a dozen different um, nonprofit organizations that do great work here, and uh, they were the only one to call me back. So, there, you know, there's God working. It's been a great travel since then. So. Keep, get that on your calendar. We're going to have the registrations. I think you can register the day of, too, but it's like two bucks more. So, And you can always go to thefosteringcommunity.com uh, for the Alexandria one and, and find it on there. So I encourage you all to there. We also have our weekly, as I mentioned, if you get a chance, join one of these Bible studies. Bob leads uh, Sunday morning, and uh, that's at 9.15 Sunday morning they have a Bible study, and we have Wednesday morning Bible study at 10.30, and then that night at 6.30. And we learn a lot more about the Word that we just studied. So I invite you to come. It's a good time. Um, we always have a good time on top of learning stuff. And this Thursday is the women's lunch. Where's that, Miss Linda? Crazy Cajun at Shreveport Highway at 11 a.m. this Thursday, okay? So if you can make it, make it. I've made it a few times. I'm going to put it in my calendar and try and make it. I missed the one over at Buckets. Boy, I wanted to make that one, but I think I had a doctor's appointment or something. But it's a real good time. So, ladies, if you can make it or if you, if you need a ride out there and want to go, you let me or no, and Jason. It might remind Jason of it. Jason has sometimes forgetful me, too, if I don't put it in my calendar. So I thank you all for coming today. I hope... The word, I know, I don't know about my words, but I know the words of our God will transform you from today. So take those, go forth, and let people know the love of God that we have in this world still. Mr. Biggs, who's going to, this is Bob and Marlene, if anybody knows, they uh, host our family day. And I, again, I can't tell you how excited we are to do it. I got a lot of people I'm taking to get fishing license this week and uh, get our stuff dusted off and everything. And, but uh, would you lead us in our closing prayer, please? Father,